Wicked Engine supports variable rate shading, or VRS for short. VRS is easiest to try by modifying the shading grid settings in the material window. Let's select an object, so the corresponding material is also selected for you. And inside the material window there is this combo box saying shading grid. Hover over it and the tooltip will tell you that it requires hardware support for variable shading grid. If your GPU doesn't support this, then the shading grid combo box will be grayed out and unusable. But since uh, my GPU supports this, I can select an increased or rather reduced shading rate. So an increased block size of shading rate will correspond to a, a lower shading rate essentially, which is a performance increasing technique. If I select it now, perhaps it's not immediately visible what it does. So I recommend to just reduce the resolution to a very low setting so that just uh, you can see better what's happening. So let's do that. And you can see the floor being really pixelated, but also like everything else is really pixelated now. So let's just try switching back to the default one by one shading rate. So yeah, as you can see, the floor still looks pretty, pretty good with the default settings and the drastically re reduced resolution. But if you reduce the shading grid, then it will get this very blocky pixelated look. But the good thing about this is that only the inside of geometry gets, gets this pixelated look, but uh, the edges of the geometry where the depth testing actually happens is, uh, is fully retained, which might remind you of MSA because VRS works sort of like the inverse of MSA. The MSA is multi-sample density aliasing. If I enable MSA that with this low resolution, you will immediately see its effect. Perhaps it's not as drastic looking as VRS, but it's, it's used for a different thing to refine the, the edge information. So MSA shades every pixel once usually, so inside the triangle, inside the triangle, but if multiple triangles are inside of, or it's a triangle edge, then at only those places, it will switch to shading all different samples independently. VRS is like MSA, but as if multiple pixels are multiple samples of MSA. So VRS shades a block of pixels once uh, where there is only one triangle one overlapping triangle and broadcasts the results to nearby pixels as well and that is essentially what you can see on the floor also i, I should mention that when msa is increased then the overall look of the vrs is also improved by that so let's uh, reduce the msa setting so let's switch off the msa for now so it's better visible so this pixelated look is achieved because for a big block of pixels only one pixel of them is shaded and the results of that are broadcasted to nearby pixels within the same block so naturally it will result in this pixelated and, and blocky and not as nice look but um, the shading performance can be improved by it since uh, every pixel is still written the bandwidth of writing out these colors to the render target will be not be uh, reduced it will be the same so it's not a bandwidth saving technique rather shading performance improvement as a special case the alpha test works a bit differently than what you would expect you would expect that since the alpha test is handled within the shader since less, less shader invocations will be performed that the alpha test quality will be also uh, reduced but that's actually not the case in the vehicle engine since uh, the depth prepass for the alpha test always uses a one by one shading grid so default shading grid to retain full alpha test quality and i can simply show that by selecting this alpha blend alpha tested uh, object and then reduce the shading rate to four by four block size What you see is that the insides of the leaves receive this pixelated look, 
but actually the edges are retained perfectly uh, as uh, as the high resolution edges so because the z prepass uses a full shading rate even the alpha tested edges can be retained but the more expensive color passes which use uh, more expensive shaders with lighting these uh, can be made faster in this case in this scene i also have a particle system which you can see here this particle system uses very large uh, alpha blended particles which in itself is uh, pretty bad for performance but it also uses a pretty heavy pretty expensive uh, shader with with lighting and shadows as you can see and uh, if you enable the profiler here you can check out the emitted particles render is uh, taking a significant amount of time one milliseconds even in this drastically reduced resolution and if you increase the resolution further set it back to one then the effect of these these heavy alpha blended lighting particles are very severe because they now take 20 milliseconds which is just unacceptable fortunately you can select the particle system and in the material window you can modify the particle system's material properties just as if just as you would be able to with a regular object not every material setting will be applied to the particle systems but the shading rate can be used for these two so let's reduce the shading rate for the particle system to be a 4x4 pixel block you can immediately see that the render performance for the particle system is greatly improved it's now 3.7 milliseconds instead of 20 something you might not see a big difference in the particle system quality unless you reduce the overall render resolution let's do that now and you can see that now the particle system has this pixelated look which is not the best but uh, as, as you as you saw that it's not really apparent when the full resolution rendering is used also an interesting fact about this is that uh, the depth testing of the particle systems is uh, this works pretty good against these solid objects so the object edges are retained as you would expect unless you grab the object and move it inside the particle system itself in which case the object will also be really pixelated this happens because the particle system is uh, using a soft particle blending shader which blends the particles with the scene's depth buffer so you actually don't see the heavy cut between particles and solid geometry you can see it better like this but instead it's softly blended together with the rest of the scene inside the shader but because it's done inside the shader of course this means that when you reduce the shading rate with less shader invocations the, the result of the blending will be also affected negatively perhaps it's not the best when you must specify these shading rate settings from the content side so there is also an automatic way to enable reduced shading rate on parts of the screen that are not as important as others in wicked engine this is called the shading rate classification and you can find this setting in the renderer window let's disable the profiler for now and this checkbox vrs classification refers to the tier 2 support for variable shading rate so unless the gpu supports it it's not available but what this does is for a fixed amount a fixed size of pixel tiles it can determine the shading rate for parts of the screen and the way you determine it is by writing a custom shader for it and that shader will write a shading rate texture that is a full screen texture that we applied will be applied in screen space anyway to check this out 
with the reduced resolution, it's, uh, it's still recommended to better see the results. Let's select the floor and uh, set back its shading rate to the default one by one. So the floor is pretty good quality now. But uh, if I enable VRS classification, first you see that as if nothing happened. But if you start to move the camera around, on the parts of the screen where, where the geometry moves relative to the camera um, quickly, then uh, the shading rate at those parts of the screen will be reduced. It's not, also, not only relative to the camera movement, but object movement will be also affected. Perhaps it will be better visible if I reduce the camera movement speed a bit. You might see that this parallax occlusion mapped floor is uh, heavily displaying the shading rate changes. But since the camera is moving, perhaps it's not as, not as visible as you would think. You can also debug this with enabling this uh, debug checkbox near the VRS classification. And what this does is it will display a grid and each grid cell refers to a 16 by 16 pixel size, which the VRS classification texture uses. And depending on the on the velocity buffer of the screen, these pixel ties will be colored depending on their velocity amount. So from these blue, green, yellow, and red colors will indicate uh, one by one, or they will indicate um, an increase in shading rate uh, block sizes. Let's disable the debug now, and I would like to recommend to use this shading rate classification. Since it acts on the velocity buffer now, it's recommended to use it alongside the motion blur effect. So enable motion blur as well, and you can see that parts of the screen where it is blurred, those are the parts that will receive the variable rate shading reductions. Perhaps the effects of the variable rate shading will not be as jarring, especially if I increase the resolution again. With the motion blur, it's, it will not be visible where the variable rate shading is um, being applied on the screen. If I move the camera fast, it will be applied on the whole screen, but since the motion blur blurs it out anyway, it's, it's, it's not very distinctive. So if you are interested how to set up these variable rate shadings from the code, then you must use the graphics APIs. In the graphics device header, you will find the bind shading rate function. Just search for it here. So with this function, you can uh, set the shading rate per draw call. So before a draw call is happening, you can specify the shading rate that it will use. And with the shading rate value, you can just specify the same kind of block sizes as you would specify in the material settings window. For example, you can see in the WI renderers draw scene function how the shading rate is reset to the default at the beginning of the function. And uh, it's, uh, res it's reset to default at the end of the function. This is because inside the function, when the individual objects will be rendered, each object can specify its own shading rate within this. And the same is true for the particle systems and the, and the emitted particle systems and the hair particle systems as well. For using the shading rate classification feature, refer as example to the WR renderers compute shading rate classification function. This function dispatches a compute shader pass that writes the shading rate values to that full screen texture. Several interesting functions can be found here, like writing shading rate values for accessing by the shaders and uh, checking the variable rate shading style size, which is useful to 
know how many pixels are contained within the texture and what the dispatch rate should be. And also, after you created the, the shading grid texture from your shader, you must uh, bind it to your render pass. When you render the actual scene geometry that you want the shading grid to be applied for. And in, within the render path 3D function, there is the the main render path is created with the shading grid source attachment if the shading grid tier 2 capability is satisfied. Other than the per draw call shading grid specification and the, and the variable rate shading classification feature, it's also possible to specify the shading grid from the vertex shader. And uh, it's not used in the engine, but you can refer to the DirectX documentation and check out the SV underscore shading grid system output semantic to find out more about how to use that feature. I also written a blog about the VRS some time ago that uh, you can check out and I will link that below in the video description. That's it about VRS. I hope you found it interesting and you will try out these settings. Catch you in the next video.